Hello, my name is Gary Shotton, and I'm sitting here in my machine shop inside the quality department where we measure the parts to be sure they're accurate uh, before we ship them. I own this company. It's a, a close tolerance machine shop. Today we're going to talk about failure and how to avoid failure and a little bit of what to do if you have a bit of a failure. So number one, uh, if you have been with me in teaching and hearing what I've talked, I'm always talking about starting on your first business very small. Very, very small in a way that you don't have to borrow money, that your own pocket change or your own small amount of money that you've accumulated yourself. You're not borrowing from a bank, you're not borrowing from your relatives, but start very, very small and then grow step by step. I just tell you that is foundational to being successful and not having failure. Uh, many times uh, people just want to jump and they don't feel like they have any kind of a business going unless they have a significant amount of money uh, invested or they have a number of employees. Well that comes later. That comes when you have some experience and so I just got to reiterate those lessons and so I'll ask you, are you trying to start too big? In reality have you started too big? Have you tried to grow too fast? Those are typical mistakes that lead to failure, and nobody wants to be a failure. No one wants to see failure. Number two, you know, if you follow that advice, then you won't really have failure. You'll have what I call setbacks. A setback is a learning opportunity. It's an opportunity for something that didn't go well. You expected something to go this way and it didn't happen. You expected this sale to come from this customer or you expected this product to be a, a very large success and it wasn't. And you know, if, if it's small, uh, it's not a failure, it's a setback. And you've got to recognize that's where you learn the most. It's when you have those setbacks, when you have those disappointments. You know, if everything's just uh, flying smoothly and everything's just fine, well then you're probably not learning a lot. I had a reason when I was just a young guy in my early 20s. I was actually just 19 or 20, right in that age bracket. And I had a friend that had access to an airplane and I had this idea that I'm going to learn to fly. Well, you know, I'm going to learn to fly but I don't want to crash that thing. I've got to learn the details. I'm going to fly, and I did, but I was over my head. I wanted to advance too fast. I wanted to, to, to be on top of this. So I learned, though, when something didn't go exactly right, or when the wind was just a little bit odd, or, or the, something, and we actually practiced. One of, that's one of the things we practiced, is that we would get high in the air, and my instructor would just turn off the engine. Whoa! We're flying an airplane and the engine's not going. What do you do? Well, that's a setback. That's not a failure. We didn't crash. We practiced setbacks. We learned from the setbacks. You'll learn from the setbacks. So ask yourself, right now, am I willing to go through setbacks and be willing to identify these as an actual learning opportunity that, that, uh, uh, that you, you will learn from, you're going to learn more from the setbacks than if everything goes smoothly. Well, when you have a setback and it does happen and you're kind of knocked off your feet, you know, it's time to get back up and try that exact same thing again. Think of it this way. You know, you just went to a school where you had to pay tuition. And when you paid tuition, you learned the lesson and now, when you've learned the lesson, you go on and use that lesson that you've learned. Well, if you try in business something and it didn't work perfectly and you had a setback, maybe a near failure, whatever word you want to use, and, and you're kind of regrouping and you're getting some more fan, fi, uh, financing or you're doing something different, go at it again. If you're convinced this will work, many times it's that second or third or fourth try that will get you over I've been told that when a, when a spider uh, weaves a, 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 a web that it will swing around and it will try and try and try again until it finally makes a connection across that void and then it's connected and it will finish up its course. It didn't stop. You can't stop. You've got to go on. Now, if you decide that you're in the wrong business or something like that, that's a different story. But if you were convinced this was work, would work, whatever it was, 
uh, a new product, a, a, a new setting, uh, a, a, new, a new advertising method, something. Be truthful with yourself. Did you learn something from it? If you did learn something from it, then why don't you use that? Why don't you make an adjustment and make another run at it? Are you doing that? Are you willing to count your setbacks as the best thing that could happen for you to learn something? That's the way it works. There's no way around it. Next, I have to tell you that uh, some people just talk way too much. Um, we have a phenomenon now that we've got Facebook. And I'm not against Facebook, but I'll tell you, if you look up my name on Facebook, I have an account. But you'll see that I don't post very much. You do what you want, but I don't post very much. I certainly would not post every setback or every failure or every near failure. I'm not lying. I just didn't post that. I just didn't tell people about that. I'm not interested in broadcasting when I have a setback. I'm interested in learning. I'm going to learn from that. I'm going to make use of that. But loose lips are a difficult thing. In the World War II, they had this saying that said, Loose lips sinks ships. Well, that was in World War II where you didn't want to tell people your plan. There are a few people you could and would want to share with these things. First of all, if you're going to share something, do it in confidence. Then do it with somebody that can actually help you. Now, there's another place and time to share. It's right now when you're really willing to help somebody else, help others. But usually that's a year or two down the line, uh, a time period down the line, because you don't know the future. You don't know the step three, four, five, and six. So you don't really know much to share somebody to help them until you've been kind of down the road a little ways and have learned the real lesson from it and see it play out and see the end result of that. That's what you're going to need to do when you're talking about failure. Don't broadcast your failures. Ask yourself, are you just absolutely too talkative? Are you sharing information with the wrong people? Why are you sharing that? Why don't you keep it quiet? Well, uh, I've got to give you some examples if, uh, to make our teaching valuable, you know. Uh, so I'm going to tell you some of my failures and how they happened and how I rebounded from those. And I'm going to tell you, uh, number one, it was quite a few years ago and I had this plan where I had a moving and storage business and I was into what's called mini storages. That's where you build these buildings and people have junk mostly. It's their extra stuff, the stuff that we couldn't fit in their garage. And they would rent sometimes for $30 a month or $50 a month or $75 a month and you have a hundred of these and you give them a padlock and there's a door and it's just a concrete floor with one light bulb. It's a pretty easy rental. Well, I was into that. Man, I'm really going to do that. I'm really, 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 really going to do this. Well, I made a big mistake. I had a piece of property right next to me that I was interested in, but then I found another piece of property that was like 10 miles away. And you know, I thought, I guess I was pretty cocky at that. I was pretty proud of myself. Right? And I started two projects at one time. And neither one of them panned out. Neither one of them worked. And I had to trim back. I had to really trim back because these are not going to work. I had to work my way out of these over time. And there was a bit of pain because I lost money. In one particular case, I lost, of these two projects, I lost $40,000 because I thought I had financing in order and it was going to be a bigger project, several hundreds of thousands of dollars, and I paid for certain or committed to pay for certain engineering and surveying and soil testing. I, I committed to pay it thinking I'm going to get my financing and the bank says, you know, I think I'm going to change my mind and not give you the money. So. Be careful. Be careful how you grow, how fast you grow, what you do in growing. If you find yourself uh, trying to push too fast, too far, you're always going to have to take risk. Don't get me wrong. I mean, if you lay back too low and don't do anything, you're never going any place. But if you'll press out with the rate pace and the rate that you are designed to work at, then I believe that you will have setbacks. That's called learning. That's called the lesson. 
you know, you went to third grade, and at the end of third grade, you had to pass this test, and you got to go to fourth grade. And then you finish fourth grade, and then on up the ladder. That's how business works. And once you learn the skills, the, the, the thoughts about business over this period of time, you're going to do better. And I believe you'll not fail. You are designed to succeed, and I'm here to help you. Well, I hope this has been helpful. We ask you to view Inspiring Better Business, IBB Talks on video. You can go to the audio in many formats. Uh, please be a part of this. Thank you.